Hi, I'm Scott Distasio, founder of Distasio Law Firm. Why did I become a lawyer? Well, the reality is it wasn't something I was focused on when I was younger. I did watch a lot of lawyer shows and everybody said, you should be a lawyer. I mean, Perry Mason uh, was something I watched on a regular basis. Now they were reruns, but that's a show I watched. But when I got to college, this really wasn't what I focused on. I, I focused on the College of, uh, of um, Engineering, cause it, uh, and I was an engineer in the engineering program. And I started having this recurring dream. And I was in a little room, and the door was locked, and there was a little slit, and people would pass papers and they would have equations on them and I had to solve them. And I said, after having this dream a few times, that's not what I want with my life. So I then left the College of Engineering and went into the College of Business. And in the College of Business, I was studying economics. And I really liked the theory of economics. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be an economist. So I graduated uh, uh, from college thinking I was enrolled in the PhD program of economics. Well, what I didn't realize at the time is just like engineering is a lot of applied mathematics, PhD level, level economics is a lot of applied mathematics. So I'm in the PhD program, it's my first semester, and I'm taking differential equations and calculus three, and I start getting these dreams again, because now I'm applying all that mathematics to the economy, and, and I start think, getting that dream with the, the door and the, the slot and the, 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 the paper coming through, and I'm solving these equations, and, I'm, and I wake up, this is not what I want to do. And so I enrolled in law school, and I was going to be a mergers and acquisitions lawyer because the dual economics along with the legal degree would give me that foothold. Uh, so that's really how I got into practicing law. So now you want to know, how did I become a personal injury lawyer? Well, the, um, the truth is, as I was doing more of the economics and the law, there was the crash of 87, it wasn't a big one, but there was a stock market dip and it was difficult um, for people to get jobs in that arena. And I kind of started to decide this isn't really what I wanted to do, but I, I didn't know coming out of law school. Um, I knew I didn't want to be a criminal lawyer um, and I knew that um, I didn't want to be a a lawyer sitting around doing paperwork, I wanted to do litigation. So I got an interview at a law firm that did medical malpractice defense because a friend of mine worked there. And they wanted to see what is this guy that they had hired, who does he hang out with? So they interviewed me, gave me a job, and I kind of fell into medical malpractice defending doctors and lawyers and hospitals and nursing homes. And I thought, well, you know, yeah, it's defense, but these are people making medical judgments. They're, they're not, you know, doing criminal things. You're, you're defending people that are making medical judgments. And so I did that for about 10 years. And I eventually became the partner in charge of the nursing home defense practice. But what I started to realize is, is into the 90s that, that times had changed. Used to be that medical care was about those medical judgments and what the doctor felt was the best thing to do for the patient. But as corporate environment started to take over, the corporatization of medicine what began to happen is these were not and no longer judgment calls of doctors, but they were profit and loss calls by insurance companies and by hospitals and by nursing homes. And as a result, I wasn't defending somebody trying to do the right thing. 
I started seeing myself as a cog in the wheel. The guy whose job was to help medical providers, large corporate institutions, provide less care so they could make more money. And at the point in time when I started seeing this happening, I, I, I had developed a practice of defending nursing homes uh, and assisted living facilities. And to me, they are often the biggest culprits. Um, there are plenty of good nursing home and assisted living facilities, but some of these corporate chains, they literally were denying care so they could make more money because the cost of staff is the highest cost in the industry, if you can decrease the number of staff, you can make more profit. And, and that's really what I saw happening. And so I became pretty disillusioned over, over time with defending these institutions. So I know it's a long story, but how I became a plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. Well, I had all this experience defending these institutions, having done it for 10 years becoming disillusioned and I just woke up one day and said I'm not doing this anymore. The firm that I was in was, was shaky, some of the partners had left and it was time. I was going to take my clients and move into another uh, law firm or I was going to become a plaintiff's lawyer and start helping people and that's what I decided to do. So I fired all of my clients. Uh, millions of dollars worth of repeat business, hospitals and nursing homes, uh, a staff of, of uh, uh, paralegals, nurse paralegals, and, and, and a, another lawyer. And with two babies at home and a wife, I helped start a plaintiff's personal injury law firm having no revenue source other than the income that we would make by representing injured people and that happened in 2000 and that's how I became a plaintiff's lawyer. When I first became a plaintiff's lawyer my main objective was to help people. When I was defending doctors I was defending people but as medicine became more corporatized I began defending the corporate entities, the hospitals, the nursing homes and I wasn't helping people anymore. I was helping them make more money by helping them cover up or get away with what I perceived as harm to other people. And so when I left to become a plaintiff's lawyer, my goal was to help people. We, myself and, and three other lawyers, started a law firm we, basically on laptops and cell phones um, and grew that from the three of us to I, I think that we probably had ten, eight lawyers and, and 40 or 50 support staff, all as a plaintiff's personal injury law firm. We did medical malpractice, nursing home abuse, we did a lot of car crashes and slip and falls, any type of personal injury case. But what happened over time is as we grew this institution, uh, it became more for the firm about money than it was helping people. And so I made a decision to leave and to open up my law, own law firm where I would be 100% making all of the decisions. And so for the second time in my life, I walked away from a very lucrative practice to set up my own place. And that's how Distasio Law Firm was founded. And our goal is to help injured people. Many law firms can advocate for people and we're really good at that. Many law firms can go to trial and get good results and we're really good at that. But what most law firms fail to do is recognize that they're a business. Their job is to provide a service to the client and that service is more than just getting the outcome. We're gonna get good outcomes because we work hard for our clients. But there's another aspect that law firms don't get and that's that customer service. And at Distasio Law Firm as the founder, 
I've made it our goal to provide good customer service to our clients in addition to working hard and getting good results. Well, well, first and foremost, I reject that label for personal injury lawyers. Are there bad apples? Sure. There are bad apples in every industry. I can point out medical doctors who were doing procedures on people that were unnecessary and harmed them to, uh, in order to make a lot of money. I can point out politicians that do great things or bad things. Every profession has good and bad and it is just wrong to label personal injury lawyers as ambulance chasers or just after the money because the reality is we don't get paid unless we get a recovery. We take our money and invest it in the case to hire expert witnesses, medical records at a dollar a page can be up in three to five thousand dollars, expert witnesses at six to eight hundred dollars an hour can be upwards of ten and twenty and thirty thousand dollars and you can be literally fifty to seventy five thousand dollars into a case and worked for a year, two years and three years. Who in their right mind is going to do that just to make a buck and blackmail somebody into getting a result if somebody wasn't harmed because of someone else's negligence. Nobody. It's a huge risk. Nobody takes that risk unless they believe that they can get a recovery based on somebody doing something wrong. So I reject that. Are there individuals who sometimes try to do that? Yeah, they usually go out of business because you can't do that and ultimately win all of your cases and the overhead will kill you. On the other hand, there are law firms <clears throat> that have kind of lost their way. There's a settlement on the table. It's a legitimate case. And that settlement will put some money in the client's pocket. And they have some fears about going to trial and taking that risk. And so they encourage the client to take that money. And often in those cases, the client isn't getting compensated as much as they could be. And over time, it can become a volume and a mill where that law firm then is just pushing cases. They're legitimate cases. They get decent results, but they're not really full value. And in the end, what happens is those law firms make a lot of money, their clients get okay results. The difference with the Stasio Law Firm is we're not a settlement mill. We are going to take your case and do everything we can to get the maximum recovery we can. And if your case deserves to go to trial and you're willing to do that, we're going to do that. And I think that separates us from most law firms in town. You know, there's a difference between doing routine car crash cases where, you know, everything's the same and you just kind of put a system together and you kind of push those cases and dealing with um, nursing home abuse and neglect cases and, 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 and some of these complex medical malpractice cases. And the difference is the volume of records and the number of experts that you have to have that you know you might be going through 5,000 pages of records and you might have to find in those 5,000 pages the needle in the haystack and then you have to get them to the expert and the expert review all of that and then have conversations and know and understand all of the medicine for each of these different types of cases and be able to talk to and interact with all of the different experts and then boil all of that down in a way that you present your case and ask questions of witnesses that is easy for the person that doesn't have all that education to understand. You know, you can talk in complex medical terms and, or you can talk in simple language. And the process of doing that over and over and over again can, is not only time consuming, but it can be physically and mentally draining. And so the hardest part 
about the practice is keeping up that energy and continuing on and, and finding that needle in the haystack and then being up for the next case. So ultimately, I view my job as holding wrongdoers accountable for their wrongdoing. And there are times where there's just this, this injustice that you see where somebody's been harmed, they're not able to, 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 to care for themselves, they don't have the financial resources, and their whole life has been really upended and destroyed and it's never going to get better. There's a certain satisfaction of going through all those records, identifying the issues, hiring the right expert witnesses, bringing it all to the table, orchestrating in a way that you ask the questions of the witnesses to pull out that wrongdoing in a way that they can't deny it and wrap it up in a package that if they're not willing to resolve that case fairly to help that person, that a jury's going to understand and it's gonna, they're going to hammer them. And at the end of the day, all we can do is help people. And if you can get that recovery for that person who's sitting there unable to care for themselves and you're able to do that, that's why I do what I do. You, you're going to put that on a video? You, got, you caught me on the spot there. Sorry. Absolutely, there have been times when I have what I've seen and what I've gone through. It's like, why do I continue to do this? Never once as a plaintiff's lawyer. As a plaintiff's lawyer, I see the injustice and it motivates me to work harder. When they say you can't get a result for that person, it makes me work harder. The times where I have seen and been asked to do things that made me never want to be a lawyer again has always been when I was defending hospitals and nursing home institutions because it wasn't about what was right and wrong. It was about can we win and how can we win. And I just don't think that's what lawyers should be doing. You know, first and foremost, if you're doing it just for the money, it, 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 it's not going to be a satisfying career for you because it's hard work. It is sometimes disappointing. But if you're doing it because you really want to help people, you're going to find great satisfaction. Yeah, you're going to have your down times, and yeah, you can't win every case. And, but work hard. Spend the extra time to, to, to hone your craft, to be good at what you do, to look for that thing that everybody's missing, that simplifies it, and makes it clear. And if, if you do those things, be in it to help people, spend the extra time, and hone your craft, I think you'll find that it's a, it's a really satisfying career. I, I, I mean, it, 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 helping people is a service, and when you are providing a service to people, you get back more than just money. You get back that, that knowing that you're helping people and you're helping society and you, you, it creates a purpose for your life. I'm Scott Distasio from Distasio Law Firm and we're here to help. If you have any sort of personal injury problem, give us a call and we'll do everything we can to help you.